Today I want to talk to you about seven practical tips for water fasting. Water fasting is very popular nowadays. A lot of people have got into it, uh, but a lot of people don't know how to overcome the feeling of hunger and other issues that come up when you're fasting. Now, this is very much not a spiritual video, but it's a practical, as the video title says. This is a practical skills-based learning session. Uh, so we're going to learn some of these techniques that I've used when water fasting. And this can be used for any length of water fast that you do. I mean, it could be for a one-day fast or for a 40-day fast or beyond. You know, it really doesn't matter how long the fast is, but what matters is can you effectively accomplish whatever your goal is as far as fasting is concerned. So the first tip that I want to give to you is make sure you drink a lot of water. A lot of people, when they go on a fast, they don't realize that they're dehydrated. And when you're dehydrated, you're very weak. And that's why a lot of people get sluggish when they're fasting, especially water fasting, because they're not drinking enough water. See, when you're normally eating throughout your day, a lot of food content has water content in it. And so when you're not eating, you're not getting that extra water that your body is used to, and therefore you become fatigued and famished. And so you have to drink a lot of water. My recommendation would be to try and drink up to a gallon of water a day. Uh, you don't need to go much beyond that, but drink a gallon of water a day and you'll get some strength. And believe it or not, you're going to feel amazing. You'll feel this great energy that comes up in you just simply by being hydrated and you won't be so sluggish and tired. And that was some of the difficulties in my past when I didn't realize that when I don't drink enough water while fasting, I become very fatigued. Why? It was because I wasn't drinking enough water at all. And when you start drinking a gallon, just make that your rule. Like I need to drink a gallon throughout the day. And that's really not a lot of water. People think that a gallon is so much, you know, people do these gallon challenges, gallon of water a day challenges, but it's really not a whole lot of water if you space it out throughout your entire day. Second tip, use light exercise, either walk, do body weight exercises, or some type of light aerobics. Some people, they say, oh, you should just sit down and lay down and sleep all day. That's not an effective fast. That's not a good fast. And it's really not good for your body. One thing to combat hunger and to combat um, feeling tired and sluggish is to get your body moving, get your blood circulation, the blood flow going. And that is by doing some type of light aerobics or a little bit of light exercise that will help you amazingly. I mean, when I do fast, you know, especially when it's beyond like three days and you're just doing water only, I mean, when you start working out your body, just light workout, you know, not a whole lot. You don't have to overexert yourself, but when you do a light workout, man, I feel so great and so much more strength comes to me. And I'm like, oh, I can keep on doing this. And a lot of times you'll notice, especially as you go well beyond the three day mark and you go, you know, into these deeper, longer fasts, you'll start noticing strength that would be so contrary to what you would believe, right? You wouldn't think that there should be some strength when you're going without food, but what happens is your body starts working on its own reserves and the things that it has stored inside of it. And so you do have plenty of strength, but you just have to get past some of these initial feelings that you have. Third practical tip is very self-explanatory. Watch out for food. Don't look at food all the time. Don't be watching the food network. Don't be, you know, going out and just sitting at a restaurant. Don't go grocery shopping and all this stuff. If you can avoid it. Now, there was a time in my life when I was a young man and I was just a pretty much a brand new convert, but I was really getting into fasting. So I went on, you know, I do these longer fasts, you know, and I remember being on a seven day fast, just water only, but I worked as a cashier at a grocery store and people were bringing in these warm chickens and all this stuff was coming through. And I saw that every day, but I had no other choice. That was my job when I was, you know, 16, 17 years old, but I wanted to fast. So sometimes you can't avoid it. Maybe you're a cook but, or a chef or something like that, or you work with food or in the food industry. You can still overcome because I've done it before. You can still overcome. But if you can help it, try and avoid uh, exposure to food best you can. OK, at least initially. Now, when you get longer into a fast where you don't feel those pulls and tugs that I need to eat, I need to eat, then you can, you know, get back to being exposed to food again. You know, especially sitting down with your family at dinner. That's fine. You know, these are all things that I recommend doing, too, and just uh, having joy nonetheless that you're not eating, but you find joy in things beyond food. And that's what we have to learn. The fourth thing is 
avoid legalisms that can come when you're fasting. For instance, and this is something that I used to do a lot. I'm like, oh, no, I can't have this. I can't eat this. I can't eat this. Don't tell yourself that. Tell yourself that I can choose to eat whatever I want at this moment while you're on a fast. You can say, I can choose to eat whatever I want, but I am choosing not to eat today. And that's one technique you can use. And I've told this to other people and they've, they've been greatly blessed by this. But they said that when I told them this particular uh, piece of advice that it helped them. And that is this. Tell yourself, I can eat whatever I want, just not today. And that's all you're saying. It's just a mental game. And half of fasting is just a mental game. It's really not your body. Your body's not, not struggling as much as you think it is, but your mind is struggling and you're going against your natural pattern and way of life. So avoid legalisms though and traps where you're like, oh, I can't do this. I can't do this. I can't do this. I can't do. You can in fact do that. There's no law. There's nothing saying that you can't, right? Eat that food or whatnot. But tell yourself and just be honest, say yes, I do want this food, I do want this right now, but I'm not gonna have it today, I'm going to have it another day. And a lot of times, you'll believe it or not, you'll find yourself being able to overcome those little temptations. Now throughout the day, there'll be different times when there's different battles, but don't try and do, let's say you're doing a long, long fast, an extended fast, you know, 21 days or beyond of just water. Well, don't try and set yourself up for failure by saying I'm doing 21 days of water only and think about that every day. No, think about every meal as a battle. You just have to get through each battle. There's several battles through the day when there's food temptations or whatnot. You just get through those battles. Don't try and fast the whole 21 days in your mind every day, but knowing, yes, deep in your mind, you know that you are fasting 21 days or whatever, however long you determine, but just think about this in your mind and say, no, I'm only doing one day, one battle at a time, one meal. You know, you can sometimes you can just do I'm just doing one day at a time or you can just say I'm doing one meal at a time. And every meal that you do, it's just another battle, but it adds up to being full days and then many, many days. Right. And your mind, though, is is realizing that, oh, this is not so bad. It's just me not eating this meal. And as you combine it all, you ended up not eating for 21 plus days. See, it's a powerful thing. These are simple techniques. They're practical, but they work and they are very effective tools for you. The fifth point is prayer and meditation. If you do not have prayer and meditation and some contact with the spirit world, you need to find that. You need to get in tune with God and seek his face. Why? Because he will give you empowering strength. And if you are a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, you have this deep inner longing I mean, really, if you push away all the other things and the ambitions of the heart and all this and the, the temptations of the world, you have a deep longing within yourself to be in contact with God. And that is one thing that we need to learn to do is that when we're fasting, we are going and doing this unto God. We're doing this to connect, to push away everything else in the natural way of life and saying, I'm trying to do something different. I want God. I want to be greater in contact with the spirit world than with the natural world. And you'll be surprised at how God will draw near to you when you come to a place of fasting. The sixth point and practical tip is read a book. Before your fast, plan to have a book that you haven't been reading and something you've been wanting to read. Get that book and say, when I fast, I get to read this book. It should be something, of course, not, not something that's crazy, but it should be a book that is spiritual, a book that is encouraging, and a book that will help you. It could be a book on fasting. That's fine. It could be a book on just spiritual life, but it should be something that will feed your spirit man and your soul. And really, read the Bible. That's a great thing. Of course, that should be a given. But other books too have special books that you've been wanting to read and read them when you're only when you're reading uh, only when you're on a fast. Okay. Um, the seventh and final tip for this uh, particular video is do a daily ref reflection. So reflect in your mind, reflect in your heart, reflect in your being, reflect on the day. Reflect on where you were strong, where you were weak, and how you can uh, go the next day even better if you're not on the final day of your fast. But another effective tool is to, while you're reflecting, journal this. Journal your experience of that day, how you felt, how you wish you felt, and 
what did you accomplish that day in your fast? And that will help you and you'll be able to go back into these records. I'm really a big proponent of recording the things you do as far as devotion is concerned. So these are my tips for you. Please employ them, use them in your next fast and you will be surprised at how effective these simple practical tools are. All right, God bless you until next time.